We begin tonight with Save Mart and legal action being taken against them by First Union on behalf of union members who claim they've been segregated from non-union staff and fear they are about to be laid off. We have more on that development shortly, but first, how we learned about this. This week we've heard from Save Mart workers who claim they've been exposed to health and safety risks by being denied the use of gloves while sorting through the clothing donations made via the big blue bins in many New Zealand neighbourhoods. The bins have Child Cancer Foundation on the side, but the foundation is a charity recipient, not the organiser. The nationwide business behind the bins is Save Mart and its parent. The workers we've spoken to told us about being denied the use of gloves and of finding syringes, broken glass, used sex toys and clothing covered in blood and faeces as they sort through the donations people have made. On Wednesday, WorkSafe told us they'll investigate health and safety standards. Throughout our coverage, Save Mart's owner, Tom Doonan, has declined our interview requests. But he's emailed us denying the accusations his workers are making, insisting gloves are available, that there are no health and safety risks, and rejecting claims his workforce is unhappy. So we asked to visit his workforce in New Lynn, Auckland. No interference, free reign to talk to anyone. And Tom Doonan said yes. Well, so we thought. What's your name? Leanne. Nice to meet you, Leanne. I'm John. Thank you for having me. So what are you doing here? Sorting. If you're listening, we've frozen the shot. Leanne is standing at a workstation with two pink bags in front of her, the kind that are put in letterboxes, filled with used clothes, then collected from the curbside. They have helps children with cancer printed on them. And all around Leanne are large, packed bales. They're everywhere. And so... I am standing beside a very large wool bale that yeah. anyone who's ever been in a wool shed in New Zealand no, will recognise. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but what's inside there? Uh, you have the collections from the thing. Do you want me to open yeah, it? Yeah, I'd love it. Thank you. Thank you very much. The bales contain the clothes from the blue bins. It's an impressive business model. Most of the stock is donated by people giving clothes to support the Child Cancer Foundation which is what's written on the side of those blue bins. There's no mention of Save Mart. And the Child Cancer Foundation does indeed benefit. That's not in dispute. But a far larger percentage of the revenue from those donated items goes to Save Mart itself. Let's go back to Leanne, opening a bale. So you're not wearing gloves? No, I choose not to. You choose not to? You could if you wanted to? Yes, I could if I wanted to, but I choose not to. Leanne's emphatic about that. And I notice the rest of the unexpectedly small number of sorters on the floor aren't wearing gloves either. Which seems confusing. I'd been told this was a bigger workplace with more sorters. I'd also been told it was a somewhat grimmer environment. Darker, colder, more bleak. We were at the rear of the Newland shop. But that's not where the sorters had told me they were. I am now at the back of the sorting area and a curious thing has happened because over the past few days we've been speaking to people off the record via phone about their experiences of working here a lot of people and I've tried to find those people and none of them are in this room all the people who are here aren't the people we've been talking to so I've asked permission to go to uh, the part of the building where those people are, the union members seem to be working separately and I'm just waiting for permission uh, to see whether we'll be able to do that. Outside, Save Mart looks slightly past its best. A broken window, a sign not properly attached, a door that looked like someone may have tried to force it, the blue bins with child cancer written on them waiting for more donations. And boy, do those donations come. Inside the Newland store, there are thousands of items of clothing, and this is one of 31 Save Mart stores nationwide. Collecting, sorting and processing these mostly donated items is big work. Nationwide, Save Mart is a relatively large employer. But where were the staff I'd been speaking to? So this is a very bizarre experience. We phoned this morning and asked if we could come out and talk to the workers, and we have been able to talk to some of the workers. But we understand the union members have been segregated and are working in another part of this facility. Clearly, we don't just want to talk to a hand-picked sample of workers. We want to talk to all the workers and have free range as we thought we were getting. So I went to the local on-site manager she called Tom Doonan and asked for permission for us to go and talk to the rest of the workers, the ones who aren't here, and that has been declined. So, 
what was presented to us as an opportunity to come and talk free and frankly to the workforce is simply not that at all. There are one, two, three, four, five people working here. There are, we understand, a larger number working next door, but we're not allowed access to them. And I can't really see the point of having let us in in these circumstances. Either we can talk to the workforce or we can't. Can I give Tom a call? Yeah. Have you got his, have you got his number? Yeah, can you pass the phone over? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. At this stage, we're freezing the picture. The local manager found herself with me and a camera person there having to tell us we couldn't visit all the workers we thought we'd come to see. We promised not to identify her, but we asked her to call the owner back so I could speak to him, and as she did so, she began to get distressed. But she spoke to the owner on her phone. Does Tom want to talk to us, to me? He's driving at the moment, Right, OK. Tom was driving and couldn't stop to talk. By this time, the local manager was clearly upset. We decided to go. I spoke to her away from the camera, explained we wouldn't name her or show her, and we left. And so as we pass the jewellery section, we're going to leave the Newland store in Save Mart. Sorry, the Save Mart store in Newland, having been invited out to um, talk to the workforce, we haven't really been able to. And that is that. Except it wasn't, because as we walked back to the car, we noticed an adjacent building that appeared to be connected. And one of the workers we'd met had told us the sorters who were union members were, quote, next door. I found them having lunch break. They invited me in, but I decided against that and spoke to them through the door. Well, I don't think I should, because I, I might get you into trouble. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. We're, is this, so is this, are all the union members over here? Yeah. Yeah. All the union members over here? Yeah. And the non-union members are? In the front. In the front. Yeah. And did you all used to be together? Yeah. And where were you all together? In this building or the front building? This side. This, this side. side. Yeah. So when we were allowed in to see that side, we were seeing non-union members in a workplace that you haven't previously been in. Is that right? Am I putting words in your mouth or is that right? So where you actually work and where you've always actually worked until the union and non-union members were separated is here, is in this building. Okay, thank you. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you. There were more workers there than on the other side. And amongst them, I presume, some of the people who told me over the phone about finding syringes, vibrators, broken glass, etc. as they sorted through the bales with no gloves on. It appears the workforce has been roughly split. On the other side, which we visited in the open where we'd been allowed, Leanne was happy in her work and deaf too. No gloves required as she sorts the bales. I mean, you do find dirty things, but it's a case of being conscious of not, you know, as in any dirty job, you don't go putting your, your hand all the way in a bale, do you? Um, that's... It's about being conscious of what could be in there. Clearly, Leanne likes her job and is good at it. But until recently, I was told she'd been with the others out the back. On the way out, I met two workers who told me they'd only been split recently. Union and non-union, they said. Formerly one big team, now two different teams. And, most importantly, in the context of our visit, two separate workplaces. So two weeks ago. All here. Yeah. So that woman Leanne I met and spoke yeah. to, yeah. all in the back yeah. here. Yeah. All right in here. Promise? Promise. Yeah, promise. Okay. Promise. Graham McKean from First Union, do you believe union and non-union workers have been segregated at the Newland Save Mart? Yes, we're in a very strong view that there is an approach by the company to segregate, move the two um sets of employees aside so that the company can go through a restructure basis and move the non-union uh, to one side and make the union members redundant because that part of the operation would no longer be valid. 
We've uh, followed that up with a legal letter sent through to the company challenging on this, and we are still waiting a response on that. So you are taking legal action, would that be fair to say, against Save Mart? We are most definitely taking legal action against Save Mart. On the basis of the segregation of union and non-union workers and your concern that non-union workers are being prepared to be laid off? That's totally correct. So uh, under the law, it's unjustified disadvantage, and we have a very clear and strong perspective on that. That is Graham McKean from First Union. We went to Tom Doonan this afternoon for a response to what Graham McKean had just said to us. We're waiting to hear back from him. As we said, Save Mart New Lynn is just one of 31 Save Mart stores throughout the country owned by Tom Doonan and his son Grant. Their company, the Textile Recycling Centre Limited, has been recycling clothing for 40 years. They opened the first Save Mart 19 years ago. Tom Doonan has refused to be interviewed every day this week, but he has answered written questions. He insists gloves are available for staff in stores and they're sourced from black Blackwood and Bunnings. We asked him why we were only allowed to speak with non-union members in Newland yesterday. He said he thought we'd already spoken to union members earlier this week and he thought union members that were there when I visited. He has yet to answer any of the questions we put to him today and has declined to take our calls. But given the number of people contacting this, us this week, unaware of the clothing they put in pink bags or in the blue child cancer bags, went, sorry, child cancer bins, went to Save Mart, we also wanted to know how much Save Mart donates to charity. Now, Mr Doonan referred us to his website and we've contacted the Child Cancer Foundation, the Methodist Mission and Kidney Kids to try and find out. The Child Cancer Foundation has not got back to us. The Methodist Mission declined to comment until it had spoken with Mr Doonan. And Kidney Kids tells us the last donation it received from Save Mart was in May 2016, but received $50,000 over a five-year period prior to that. We'll have more on this story after six o'clock tonight.